I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. It's that time again, Rama Praise, and we're here, you're there, and it's going to be a great program today, hon. And yes. you're the one that's doing the, the speaking, speaking today. today. Yes. yes. And you know what? I am talking about what should we be focusing on. Yes. Um, so many times, especially in the world that we're living in right now, uh, it's just really easy to, to focus on negative yeah, to things. Get your, your focus off of what God said in His Word. That's right. And I, I know myself, you know, all of these negative things, so many times every day, uh, just comes, you know, to our head. Yes, uh, yes. Well, actually, situations come. Right. And I know when they do come, guess what? I always say, and I always think, because I remember what your dad would always say. He would say, I remember when you'd be getting up to do the announcements or something when you were crusade director many, yeah. many years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he would say. Back in the 70s. Yeah, no, that's many years ago. But he would say, son, always stay on the positive. Yep. Always stay on the positive. And so I have always kept that in my thoughts. And when negative things come, I endeavor to stay on the positive. Yeah, and you know, Focusing, uh, there's an old song that goes, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Yes, look full, full in his, his wonderful, wonderful face. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So let's go right now where I am speaking on what should we be focusing on. Well, you know, as I was preparing for this, I mean, the Lord just, just seemed to quicken in my heart. This is a very pivotal time. This is a very pivotal camp meeting. And I believe that it's very pivotal for all of you that are here. Not just, you know, not just the Rama campus. For all of you that are here, it is a very pivotal time in your life. It is a very pivotal time for those that are in the ministry. It's a very pivotal time, pivotal time. And I, you know, I believe that God's going to talk to you. What is the purpose of camp meeting? Well, you know, Brother Hagen always taught us every meeting needs to have a purpose. Every meeting has to, ha, needs to have a purpose. So what's the purpose of camp meeting? Why do we have camp meeting? Why, what are the lasting benefits of camp meeting? You know, if you don't know the purpose, then you don't know how to get the maximum results from that, right? So what is the purpose of camp meeting? Well, as my Mother would tell me many times when she wanted to talk to me, she'd say, Lynette, now, now get your mind quiet. Get your mind quiet. Well, she knew that probably I had upteen things on my mind, so that's why she wanted to tell me, get your mind quiet. So I'm telling you, this week, I want you to get your mind quiet. Don't be thinking about, you know, home. Don't be thinking about the things that are happening in your life. Because you see, if you're concentrating on that, God can't talk to you. He can't talk to you when you're talking to yourself. You got to listen to his voice. It's a time to get spiritually renewed. It's a time for your soul to get refreshed. You know? And it is a time that you need to write down what God is saying to you. Many times, you know, we will, uh, we will let things slip if we don't write it down right then. I can't tell you how many times during a sermon that somebody was preaching that it didn't even involve the sermon. I wasn't even, it, I wasn't taking the notes of the sermon, but God was speaking to me. God was speaking, and I wrote it down. Because if you don't write it down then, because you see, it, it, it's coming not from your head, it's coming into your spirit. 
And if you don't write it down, you'll forget about it. You'll forget about it. It's time to draw strength from God and get the joy back into your life. You know, we, <laughs> we've had opportunities for several years now not to have the joy in our life. It's a time I know that many times the, the word that's taught during camp meeting is the word that my husband and I are going to need later on. God is preparing us for later things that we don't know about that's going to be happening in our life. You know, I, I'm amazed sometimes. I see people here at camp meeting and they're just shouting and hooping and hollering. And then they get, get home and two days later there's, they're grumbling and they're complaining. They're in the molly grubs. Well, you know what? That's not getting out of camp meeting what you need to get out of camp meeting. You know, it's, and I'm not against it, but it's not just about a shout and a run. Okay? That's not going to get you through the heart. I'm not against it. I'll shout with you just as much as you do. But I'm not against it. But that's not going to get you through the hard times. It's not about, you know, uh, the minister coming and laying hands on you and saying, be blessed, and you fall out in the spirit. And it's not about that. Though I'm not against that, but let me tell you what. It's about gearing yourself up and getting hold of the power of God and the name of Jesus that will get you through the storms in your life. You know, it's about having the having done all stand mentality. It's about, as you've heard me say many times, get your stubborn on. Get in the devil's face and say, devil, you cannot, de be, you cannot defeat me. I will not quit. And you're not going to defeat me. It's about saying, if God be for us, who can be against us? It's about saying, I have a destiny. I have an assignment. And I don't care what the devil brings across my path. I'm going to complete my assignment. You've got to get your stubborn on. It's a time to polish your armor. Gather up your armor, polish it, and get ready for battle. Because I'm telling you what, we are living in the last days. And there's battles to fight. So this afternoon, I am speaking on, and you know what? My husband just walked all over my sermon last night. <laughs> you know, I learned a long time ago not to tell him, not to tell any preacher what I was meditating on or thinking about because they would preach it before I got, got to it. I never tell him anything about, you know, what I'm speaking on and he doesn't tell me. I don't even ask him. Because, you know, I want God, you know, to give us what the people need. And he talked about expect. And it's like, okay, quit using that illustration. I'm going to use that illustration. No. <laughs> but obviously, this is something that we need to hear more than once. You know, I remember, I think I was about a fourth or fifth grader in school, and the teacher was, uh, we were seeing a film, it was a documentary, and uh, so we, we looked at it once, and so the next day she said, we're going to watch that again. And you know, as a child, I'm thinking, hey, I've already seen that, I don't want to see it again. But of course, we had to watch it again. So we watched it again. And so afterwards, I'm, you know, I'm thinking, why did we have to watch it again? And she said to us, what did you see the second time that you did not see the first time? And it's like, wow, I started thinking of all the things that I didn't pick up the first time that I saw the second time. So now, you know, myself, I want, I, I'm one of these that I want to know why. 
I want to know why I didn't see it the first time. So I started questioning, and I, really, I asked God about everything because he's, he can give you the best answers, you know. So I'm thinking, God, why did I not see that the first time? These are the thoughts that came to me, you know. And I thought, you know what? The first time, I'm anticipating what's going to happen next. So I'm not focusing all my attention on what is happening now because I'm thinking, what's going to happen next? And you know, the same thing happens with sermons. It's like we're focusing, okay, where are they going to go to the next time? It's kind of like Brother Hagin talked about one man that had heard his sermon on faith 50, 50 times, and it was the 50th time that he finally got it. So, you know, I thought last night, okay, well, God, they must need it many, many times. But, you know, I, I can, you know, when we would be going through difficult times, circumstances um, in the ministry, we'd go to my father-in-law, you know, for advice. And the words that I can hear him say and the words that come to me so many times when now, even though he's looking from the grandstands, and I'm sure he is today, many were looking from the grandstands, I can still hear those words in my ears, stay on the positive, stay on the positive, stay on the positive. And I put it like focus on the positive. Focus on the positive. You know, in life, what kind of person are you? Are you a pessimist? Are, are you an optimist? You know, a pessimist can always see something bad in even a good situation. You realize that? An optimist will see something good even in a bad situation. My dad tells a story of a man who always saw something good in everybody. So this man who was the worst man uh, in that community. I mean, he was a horrible person, and he died. Nobody liked him. So it was the funeral, and it was the viewing, and uh, so everybody was looking to see, okay, this man always says something positive about everybody. What's he going to say about this man? There's nothing positive about this man. So when he went up to the casket, he looked at the man, and he says, he sure did have pretty teeth. <laughs> well, that was a positive word. He sure did have pretty teeth. You know, Paul tells us, I, I mean, I, I love to read after Paul, and especially Philippians when he was in jail. And there he was in jail. And yet, he was writing to the Philippians, and you know, over in Philippians 4, I believe it is, he said, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. And then he gave them these words over in verse 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, what are we supposed to do? Think on those things. You know, there's a story about a little boy and he was overheard talking to himself as he had strutted in the backyard. He was wearing his baseball hat and toting a, a ball and a bat. And so he said, I'm the greatest hitter in the world. And so he tossed the ball in the air, swung at it, and he missed. And he said, strike one. And so, again, you know, undaunted that he picked up his uh, ball again and he pronounced to the world, I'm the greatest hitter in the world. He tossed the ball up into the air. When it came down, he swung again and he missed it and he said, strike two. Well, you know, that didn't discourage him. He decided he was going to do this again. He paused for a moment, examined his ball and his bat, and he spit on his hands and rubbed them, I guess, as they do together. I don't know anything about sports. I don't know why I'm using a sporting illustration, but anyway. <laughs> That's all I hear. You know, the only, the three things that I hear from my husband is the, arm, the Bible, the army, and sports. And the only one I know anything about is the Bible. 
<laughs> but it just comes out. So, Adonity picked up the ball and said again, I'm the greatest hitter in the world. He tossed the ball into the air, came down, he swung again, and strike three. He missed again. And so the, the little boy paused for a moment, examined his bat and ball carefully. He, he uh, looked and he, he looked and he said, I'm the greatest pitcher in the world. I'm the greatest pitcher in the world. You know, his circumstances had not changed. But guess what? His optimistic attitude prompted him to give an encouraging word to himself. Your attitude determines how your circumstances will impact your life. I want to say that again. Your attitude will determine how your circumstances impact your life. You know, the world uh, around us has programmed us to be negative. The news that we hear, what is it? Negative news. We concentrate on the difficulties in our life. We concentrate on what's gone wrong in our life. We concentrate on our mistakes. We concentrate on our weaknesses. But that's not what we, don't, we need to focus on. Focus. Let's look at the definition of focus. A point of concentration. Directed attention. But I like this one. To fix one's attention toward a central objective. To fix one's attention toward a central objective. So, let me ask you a question. What should we be focusing on? Focus on the Lord, not on the world. You know, there's an old song that I, when my world is just swirling around me, and I want to tell you what, as I was writing this sermon, do you know how much my world was swirling around you? I was practicing everything that I was writing down. People would call me, guess what? Guess what? I had to get my focus back on the Lord, you know? And then the song came to me, turn your eyes up on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let's sing it. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. You know, that just gives you a peace. When we start turning our eyes toward Jesus, it gives us a peace like nothing else can. So we need to seek the Lord. You know, but after John 3, 16, the scripture that was taught to me was Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what? All of the other things will be added. All of the other things would be added. And so I am so thankful that my parents taught me, hey, you got to seek God first. You've got to put him first in your life. They told me that over and over and over again, and I'm so thankful for it. You know, it wasn't an option of whether we were going to go to church or not. It was what time are we leaving? It wasn't, oh, well, we've got a party tonight. We can't go to church. Oh, no. Church came first. Church came first. 
And it grieves my heart, you guys, that church doesn't always come first. And then things happen in people's life and they wonder why. Well, sometimes it's the enemy and sometimes it's what you have placed first in your life. What you have placed first. And I know my parents taught me, hey, you know, that if I would place God first, then everything else would be taken care of. And not only everything else would be taken care of, but I would be blessed. Well, of course we know that. Let's turn over to Psalm 1, starting with verse 1 in the NIV. If you don't know these scriptures, you need to underline them. You need to read them often. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight, what? Is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Whatever he does prospers. We have to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord to walk in his way. I trust you enjoyed that message. You know, the enemy will always scream negative things in your ear. And so when he does in my ear, I always start quoting the word of God. I always start quoting, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. I quote, I cannot go under because I'm going over over with the help of God because he says we always triumph in him. And so I would just encourage you when those, the enemy brings those depressing thoughts to you, just start quoting the word of God. And I'll tell you what, you start quoting the word of God and he will have to leave. I quote all the time. I've not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Yes. Because there's all kinds of things that can come at you that could bring you into fear. And That's I'm right. always saying that. And you know, honey, I, I think about the fact when Jesus was tempted. Yes. And how did he reply to the enemy? It is written. It is written. It is written. written. It is right. written. That's so the what word, we need to do. That's right. So the word of God is always there to help you in those times. Yeah, we have a great product offer this month. It's uh, the little flash drive or MP3, whatever you call these things, uh, that it's got 50 camp meeting sermons on it. Yes. 50 years of camp meeting, and uh, that was last last July. In fact, we got camp meeting coming up in just a week or so here. Now, another one, that'll be our 51st. Mm -hmm. And there's 50 messages. My dad, myself, John Osteen, uh, Charles Capps. Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts, yes. T.L. Osborne. Yes. And there's one, y'all probably know, Brother Papa Goodwin, I called him, J.R. Goodwin. He he was a, he and his wife were mentors to my mom and dad. Yes. And he, he was, they were a wonderful couple. And so he's on there and I don't know how many others on there. It, it's uh, Norval Hayes I know is on there. Uh-huh. And there's many others. And a lot of these are already in heaven, but uh, you yes. you would really enjoy this. In fact, honey, uh, one of our employees, who's a younger person, uh, who of course wasn't around when all these um, yeah. took place, and he says, oh my goodness, I love that. He said, I just love to hear all of the preaching, all the teaching, and I remember that he especially liked one of your sermons. Yeah. This ain't no second, what yeah. is it? This, this <laughs> ain't no eight second ride. That's of course, right. being born and raised in Texas, I know about the rodeos, and if you're going to win, you got to stay on that fucking horse or that stay on that uh, that, bull. Uh, that bull for oh. eight seconds. But this ain't no eight second ride. This is for real. This is for life. That's and right. Everybody, I've I preached that sermon there, and I've never preached Only it again one time. because everybody still remembers it and talks about it. So I can't preach it no more. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then, so that's 50 sermons, and then your book, Create the World You Want to See and my CD, whatever you need, God's got it. You know what? All we have to do is ask him. So that is for a gift of what, honey? 
$25 or more, That's just right. go to your, go right now to your computer, rhema.org, and, and order it right now. That's right. Camp meeting next, next week. Next week. July the 23rd through the 28th. We begin Sunday night, 6 p.m., and then it goes Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. service, 2.30 and 7.30, and we have youth uh, actually call Summer Blitz, and that's for 6th uh, through 12th graders, and then children's ministry yes. at night for infants through the 5th grade. Hey, and they want me to re announce again that we are streaming on Rumble. Okay, and, yes. And we're also streaming on uh, YouTube, the Rama USA mm -hmm. app, uh, I mean, uh, channel on YouTube, yes. rama.tv. Facebook Live, mm -hmm. you can get all of our services there, 10 a.m. on Sunday, 6 p.m. Sunday night, and Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And also, conferences that are not paid conferences yes. will be on there. That's right. So, it, it's it's a good good place to go. And In Craig fact, has a podcast. Yeah, Craig yes. has a podcast. Uh, you know, his his podcast, uh, him and Tony Cook, uh, Tony McKinnon. Yes. Uh, they, they're they there on the, the podcast. And, and you can listen live at, on Raymond.org, Spotify, Pot, Pot, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, all these kind of, I don't know all, <laughs> I don't know about all this stuff. These yes. people do know about all this stuff. Y'all may know about all that. Yes. If you don't, do like I do. I go ask my grandboys and they know all about it. <laughs> And you can still apply for Raymond Bible Training College. Uh, apply Enrollment is still open. You need to apply by August the 15th. Well, thank you for being with us today. And also thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Well, it's proved that they didn't believe Jesus arose from the dead. And they still didn't believe Amen. Take a trip through time and listen to 50 of our best camp meeting messages loaded onto a thumb drive. Relive highlights and experience the atmosphere of faith with speakers like Kenneth E. Hagan, Kenneth W. Hagan, Buddy and Pat Harrison, Fred Price, John Osteen, Norval Hayes, and many more. In this powerful, life-changing book, Create the World You Want to See, Kenneth W. Hagan encourages us not to stay where we are. Whatever you need, God's got it. In this encouraging CD message, Lynette Hagen shows that whatever you need, God's got it. Go to the Word and get it. The CD, book, and thumb drive can all be yours today for a gift of only $45 or more by calling toll-free right now, 1-888-PRAISE-8, or log on anytime, day or night at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.